as investigators, I think we have, in today's environment, we have an obligation to uh, think about things that we've historically done as investigators, traditional things such as interviewing people, collecting physical evidence, um, doing our normal investigative things. Now we have to think about what does the internet offer us uh, in the capacity of validating um, something that we would normally get in the traditional sense or refuting um, evidence that may be offered to us in the physical sense uh, or even um, does it do anything at all? Well, what does the internet offer us when we want to apply to a traditional investigation um, still doing things the old-fashioned way because we have to but what does now the internet offer us to advance um, that that technique or that investigation itself. So it reminds me of a time when I had a case, um, it was charges had already been laid and it was in the middle of the court process of prosecution. And there was a, a problem arose because the, the victim in this case was a young child. Um, she uh, had allegedly been assaulted by her father, her biological father. Uh, she had visible physical injuries uh, in, a, in the sense of a, a black eye a bruise, a bruising under her eye that was visible. Um, and during the court process, um, the defense lawyer presented the child with a picture uh, from her Facebook account where the picture had been posted according to the timestamp on the Facebook account um, that the lawyer presented her. It had been posted onto the Facebook account uh, a day after um, the injury had occurred. And it was put to her that she had posted this photograph yet there was no black eye visible in that photograph. And so there was this struggle or this debate as to understand how could this be possible. She had a police photograph indicating that there was an injury. And then a day after the alleged assault, there was no visible injury. And so that obviously caused some sort of a reasonable doubt that had to be explored. I was sitting in my office and I received a call from the prosecutor involved in that case um, asking, was there any way that I could offer them some assistance in determining how do we determine the accuracy of this photograph? Uh, is it possible that the photograph may have been doctored? Uh, how do we, you know, kind of refute the, the defense claim that a day after the assault, there's no visible injury when the allegations support that the child had been assaulted. Um, so what I offered at that point was um, the only way to really validate or to look at whether validation could occur was to obtain the login credentials of the uh, young girl's Facebook account, and that was done uh, through the mother's consent. Uh, I logged into the child's Facebook account uh, and looked at and analyzed all of the photographs that were uploaded to the Facebook account, um, including the one in question. And what I was able to determine was the date and time that the Facebook photograph was in fact uploaded to to her account was the day after the assault, just like as defense had, had presented. Um, the difficulty was that when I analyzed all of the photographs on the account, you could clearly see that the child was always uploading photographs from the same IP address um, because Facebook captures that data when you upload a photograph to your account. The IP address that all of the other photographs uh, were uploaded to her account were belonged to the mother's home where the child lived the one picture that did not have the same IP address, in fact, it was a completely different internet service provider, was the picture in question, the one that the defense counsel uh, presented uh, to her. That came from I, a different IP address, and in fact, it was the only image that had the different IP address. In the end, what we were able to establish was the father had logged in uh, as the child from his house where he lived, uploaded that photograph in order to stage some sort of alibi. So when we have cases where the traditional investigation, the interview or the statement says this happened, um, and then other evidence is then presented to say this couldn't have happened, we have to think about what does technology offer us on either side of those arguments? Does it support the story that was provided or does it refute the story that was provided? And does it offer anything to explain how something could have happened when Visually, we look at something and it says one thing, um, but when we explore a little bit deeper and we utilize what technology gives us, we're able to come to a conclusion or, or get a satisfactory answer about the integrity of that, that piece of information. Um, sometimes it validates it, uh, sometimes it refutes that evidence, but we still have to look.